Learning Logic Pro is kind of like being thrown into the cockpit of a 747 jet plane with no experience. If you're a new pilot, it would be completely fair to ask what all the buttons do to make sure that you get your passengers home safely. In other words, it's totally fair for you to ask and wonder what do all the features in Logic Pro have to do with you in order to help you make the best music that you can. And to do this, I'm gonna show you 10 hidden features in Logic Pro. Actually, one of these features is a hack that I created and I don't even think Apple knows about it, so shh. All of these features will help you create, produce, and record your ideas faster, ultimately making you a better producer over time. For instance, take a note of the song you're listening to right now. That's my song, and I've leveraged all of these features which have been a real game changer for my music. So for you to understand these features, let's first talk about GPS. Pilots need to know how to quickly maneuver through the air while understanding their navigation system. If they don't, then there's little hope that the plane will arrive safely. So if we don't understand our own navigation in Logic Pro, we'll never be able to maneuver with speed and make music productively. The hidden feature to zoom in and out in Logic Pro is by using the control and option keys on your keyboard. Knowing this feature inside and out is like creating your own GPS system as you navigate through Logic Pro. So while holding the control and option keys, you'll see that your cursor changes to a magnifying glass. So just holding control and option. So just like how a pilot might zoom in on a map to get a better picture, we can do the exact same in Logic by using the control and option keys. So I can hold control and option, and that changes my cursor to a magnifying glass. And then I can create a box around a region or track as many times as I'd like to go deep and get a zoom in perspective. And then I'm gonna show you how to get out as well. So hold control option, and I can create a square. So I wanna zoom in on these acoustic guitars. So I can create a square over that, and I've zoomed in, and I can go many levels deeper if I want to by continuing to make squares over what I want to zoom in on. You see, I can get pretty, pretty granular and deep, and then I can make an edit when I'm in this deep. If I want to zoom out, all I have to do is hold control option again and just left click on my mouse. And I'm going to go back zooming out the same amount of times that I've zoomed in. So let's say you've zoomed in and you've created five squares like this. One, two, three, four, five. It's gonna take five clicks coming back out to get to that same bird's eye perspective. So control option, one, two, three, four, five clicks, and then I'm back out to this bird's eye. Now that you know about zooming, we can learn about safe landings. Have you ever been on a plane before where the pilot totally flubbed the landing? It really doesn't feel good, does it? Another thing that's really annoying is audio that pops or clicks because we haven't properly faded the audio to create a smooth transition. Or when you have different background vocals that are not nicely cut and faded to your lead vocal that make you sound pretty beginner. This little mistake could actually ruin your entire song, so it's really important that you fix this so people don't get turned off with your music. The hidden feature to fade quickly is gonna come in handy at all moments during your sessions. I recommend using the hidden shortcut, which is shift plus control. So to create the fade, it's kind of like zooming. We hold shift and control, and we also create a box over the end of an audio region where we want the fade to happen. So let's actually like zoom in again using control and option on this little vocal region down here. So we're gonna create a square while holding control and option to zoom in. And I can zoom in on this vocal comp here. So to create the fade, I hold shift control, and now I can create the box like this and let go. And that creates the fade. I can also hold shift control and edit the fade, or even edit the shape of the fade. I want it to curve out or curve under like this. And I can do another fade at the beginning, hold shift control, create the square, and then that creates the fade. You'll also notice that sometimes when I hover over the region like this, like let's say this region over here, if I just hover over the top right and I get an icon like this, this is also an option to fade where it is quick. You just have to find this sweet spot where you're kind of hovering in this general area. I have that on and it's a setting that you can have on. It's still good to have, but I do find it qu quicker by just holding shift and control because then you don't have to do any sort of hovering. You can even just be down here, shift control, create the box, and then you have the fade if that's too big 
you can edit the fade like that. Done. No more annoying pops or clicks. You know what else is annoying? When the air hostess on a plane gives you a bottle of beer, these flights are the best, by the way, but they forget to give you a mm. bottle opener. Now you're just stuck. There's one thing that can come to the rescue in a situation like this, though. Let's say you sneak past your Swiss Army knife by security and you get on the plane. Now you have the tool to actually open up this bottle. You'll now be drinking a refreshing ale in no time. Who knows, maybe you can even help your seat partner tighten up those loose screws in their watch. Ah, gotta love the Swiss. Just like the Swiss Army knife, there are two tools in Logic Pro that we can use, but there is a hidden feature that allows you to upgrade your Swiss Army knife to three tools. So to do this, you go to Logic Pro, Settings, General, and then you click the Editing tab here. You have to click this. You see here, right mouse button, we have four different options. I personally like to have it as is assignable to a tool, which comes back to the Swiss Army knife. So now I free up my left click tool, which is usually my cursor, my command tool, which is usually my marquee, but I will switch up these tools as I'm doing different things in Logic. And then I'll have my right click tool, which is usually scissors. Now I'm never in a situation where I can't open a bottle of beer. The next feature is one of my favorites because it helps me A-B test my vocal comps, which give me a better perspective to see what vocal take will be the best fit for my song. So in order to find this feature, you actually already have to have the Logic Pro take folder in place. So I have a take folder here, and I've gotten this by just recording over audio to create a take folder, which is known in Logic. So you need to have that in place to get this hidden feature. So I've chosen a little bit from take seven, a little bit from take 10, and other places to get a comp, right? Now, if you hover over where it says A here, it also might say a number for you. You're gonna get more information on the take folder. So you can see right now what I'm viewing is comp, comp A. And I have all the takes here. I could go to take seven, and load up take seven just to hear what that sounds like. If I wanna just get a perspective, I can go back to take three, go back to take 10. I can also go back to my comp. Now, the hidden feature here is if you comp a vocal and you really think it's good, but you also maybe like, you know, some other takes that you think are just as good, you can create two comps or more and create a test against each other. To do this, we create a new comp. And to create a new comp, I go back to a take, let's say take 10, where I like a lot of take 10, except these other parts where I liked in the previous take that I had. So right now I'm currently creating a new comp. I think these parts are really solid and I want to A, B test them against the previous comp that I had. So you can see here now I'm at comp B. So if I click B, I have comp B and comp A. So comp A was the first one you saw. So I listen back, then I listen to comp B. Uh, you know what? I might wanna switch up comp B a bit to make it a little more similar to comp A. You're getting perspective on what you think the best takes are with regards to two different comps. So you don't always just need one comp. So now you've uncovered zooming, fading, right-click tools, and A-B testing vocal comps. The next hidden feature has to do with airplane food. You know when you get onto the plane and then you snuggle into your seat, and then maybe you're gonna browse what movie you might wanna watch, then you're gonna take a look at the preset menu. The menu's all in place, so you don't really have to give it any thought other than maybe chicken or pasta. Yeah, I always go with the pasta though because I got food poisoning from the chicken once. The point is, there's no need to fuss about anything. You don't have to fry anything up or toss your own salad. The system is built for you to eat without any thinking on your part. Just like in Logic, there's a ton of things you can pre-build to minimize time and thinking. For instance, every new session you create, you might use the same instruments, the same plugins. Why build all of this from scratch? You shouldn't do that. Instead, you should use something in Logic called Project Templates, which give you a framework to pre-build things that you might use in every project. Besides creating your own template, you can also look at some of the pre-existing project templates that are available to you. There's one for hip hop, one for electronic, songwriter, orchestral, multi-track and music for picture. So if you're in one of these genres, you can get up and running with one of these templates, which have a lot of built-in things ready to go. I personally like to use my templates with instrument plugins, song structure, and routing. For example, let's take a look at my production template. This is a brand new Logic project. You see I have structure at the top. I have two new audio tracks that are ready to go. I have a mastering preset. I have preset plugins set on my box track and my guitar track. And I also have bus set. 
Even inside the plugins itself, I also have preset EQ shapes that I can turn on and get running quickly. Those are all saved within the template. For reading, I have a vox verb on bus one setup where I usually would use something exactly like this or similar. I don't have to add the aux track. Not that it takes much time in Logic, but it's just about saving all these time by pre-building things that you don't have to do in every project. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Very quick interruption, I have a new single out. I've worked really, really hard on it. It's available on Spotify, Apple Music, every streaming platform. I'd love if you go check it out. The link is in the description. Let's get back to the video. The next feature isn't actually even supposed to be a feature in Logic Pro. It's a workaround hack that I use and I don't even think Apple knows it exists. So you know the pain of having to dumpster dive in your plugin library to find that specific plugin you're looking for? Go to Logic Pro Settings plugin manager. Now inside categories, you can create a new folder by pressing this little plus button. What's really important here is to not just write your folder name, but to put a dash in front of your folder name. By putting this little dash, it's actually going to pop that up to the top of your plugin library. Exactly like my other folders up here, compressors, EQs, sound toys, and verbs. These are folders that I use often. So when I go and add a plugin, I can just hover here and they're right here for me, ready to go. I no longer have to go and deep dive all the way into these folders. It's way quicker just going right here. No more dumpster diving. Speaking of dumpster diving for old things, this next feature is kind of like going back to your old childhood house and scavenging through the attic for that vintage sweater that you know would totally rock in today's style. There's been countless times where I want a sound from a previous Logic Pro project, or I want to treat a vocal exactly like how I did it in a past project. It's painful though to open up the project, look what you did, copy the settings, and then import them back into a new project. That's just a complete time waster. So instead of this, head over to the right side of Logic where you have this icon. This is called the File Browser. Click on this, go to All Files, and then look for this icon. It's like a little paper with a dog ear on the top right. Click on that. This lets you browse all your past Logic projects, but not only that, all the specific files within them. For example, let's say you want to bring a vocal in from a past project and the specific vocal plugins you had in on that file. So you click the Logic file you want, then it's going to showcase all the files here. This is where naming becomes really important. And as you can see, I was very bad at naming these files. So now it's kind of difficult to understand what these files are. But if I was smart enough, I think I would have, have listed something as lead vox. So there we go, lead vox. So I click lead vox. I can't bring the lead vox in because that's a stack. You can see the type here. So let's say I want to bring in verse one, take one. Then I click on the checkboxes of what I want to bring in. Do I want to bring the content? I can scroll to the right to select more. For example, the plugins. I can also bring in the sends and all of this other information, including IO and automation. Press import project, click add. There it is. Boom, done. That was easy. You know what else is really fun and easy? Those old wooden Russian dolls. Remember those old things like when you open them up, they have like a hundred other mini dolls inside each one and you never really know how small they're gonna get. Well, that's exactly like this next hidden feature. So like I was saying, this feature actually isn't really hidden. It's in broad daylight and you've definitely seen it, but there are a lot of hidden dolls inside this feature that I'm sure you've never heard of. For example, time-saving shortcuts like cutting audio, automation shortcuts, even shortcuts for looping, copying, and pasting. The marquee tool feature was built as if Batman was consulted on all its secret use cases. For example, let's say I want to do a gain automation on this Mellotron track over the chorus. To do the gain automation, I have to add the gain plugin. I'll open up automation by pressing A. I'll go to the gain track and select gain. And now using the marquee tool, I can make a little square and just click in. And that generates four dots for me. So all I have to do is pull down to generate that automation. I can also create another square here if I want to do something a little more complicated. This is a very ugly automation, but you see how easy it was to create those dots with the marquee tool. There's so many other things that you can do with a marquee tool that it actually kind of deserves a video of its own, which is why I have one right here that you can watch later. 
Every time I work in another studio, we usually work in Pro Tools, like when I recorded my full-length album in LA. I like Pro Tools, and there's this one feature that I really wish was in Logic Pro. Unfortunately, it's not, though. But I did find a workaround hack that saves me a lot of mental space and CPU power. Ever have a project with just tons of software instruments and plugins, and you're running into too many of those system overload notifications? So what I suggest to circumvent this is to take a look at the software instrument tracks you have and decide to bounce these down to audio. Now, that's not just the hidden feature. Let me explain. Let's say you're working on this Mellotron or, for example, this piano track or anything, a trillion bass. It doesn't matter. Software instruments are the most CPU intensive. If you are totally sure, you can bounce this down to audio and then you can forget about the software instrument. But in the case that you're not too sure yet, but you still want to increase your computer speed, what you can do is make a copy, copy the MIDI down, bounce one of them down by going Control Command B, which will bounce this track into audio. Now we have one track, which is the audio with no plugins, no software instrument, great on the CPU. And then we have our original where we might want to edit later just in case. Now, what do we do with the original? We mute it, we freeze it. If you don't see freeze, you can cl right click on the track, go to track header components and make sure freeze is on. After you do both of those, you can go control H, which completely hides the track from view. So it's out of your mental space. It's muted, it's frozen, and it's not going to take any CPU power. In order to freeze it, all you have to do is press spacebar, and that's going to freeze the track, and it's gone from our view. If ever you want to change that software instrument again, because you're still producing, you're not totally sure, you can press H on your keyboard, and there it is, frozen, muted, and hidden. The last hidden feature is found in many different areas in Logic. You've probably already stared at it with your own eyes, but never actually realized its full potential. I like to call it the click and drag functionality. Ever frustrated with bulk muting things or bulk soloing things? Frustrated no longer. Click and drag to mute things all at once, or click and drag to solo multiple things at once. Same thing with turning plugins and bus ends on and off. Click and drag, click and drag. What about adding fades or gains? Gain, click and drag, click and drag up to increase gain on a certain region. Fades, click and drag down, click and drag up. Same thing, any of these things within the region inspector or usually over in the inspector view in general, the click and drag functionality works. Because we're at the end of the road here, I'm going to attach one more quick little bonus feature, which is called Option Click. Option Click is great for three specific things that I do regularly. It's great for resetting volume if you want to get the volume back to zero dB. For example, on this Vox track, the fader is here. If I just do Option Click, it resets to zero. Same thing for bus sends. If I add a new send and it's there's no send, I can go Option Click and it immediately goes to zero dB send. Same thing with inside plugins too. For example, if you're working in a compressor and you've set the gain up or you've set the gain input gain, you can still go option click on either one and that resets it here. Same thing with attack, option click, resets that attack to zero. Now you know 10 of the most valuable features in Logic Pro. But I hate to break it to you, there's 90 more that you need to know. But don't worry, I've laid them out for you in this video here. Cool. All these flowers by the bedside, do the dishes in the rain.